is NDTV. And you're watching NDTV Prime in association with Micromax. After a stellar couple of years for Honda car in India, the last few months there's been a lot of pressure on the company in terms of uh, its performance and there's been lots of questions in terms of the future product portfolio. Well, the first answer to a lo lot of those questions is coming in now in the form of the new BRV. It's a vehicle that was shown at the Auto Expo and has now made its uh, market debut with prices as well being announced uh, right here today. And to speak about the BRV and also what it means for the overall Honda car strategy, we have uh, the new boss at uh, Honda Car India, Mr. Yoichiro Ueno, joining us. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Thank you very much. You are welcome. Welcome to India and thank you for uh, you know, giving us your time today as well. Uh, it's my pleasure. I'm very excited to be here and I'm looking forward to work for India market. No, I'm, I'm glad. And you know, the thing is that, as I mentioned just now, that you know, you're the new, new man at the helm. It's literally just been about a month that you've been here and mm -hmm. uh, we've already got a very significant model coming in. So, First off, let me ask you about the BRV. The uh, anticipation was there from the Auto Expo. We mm -hmm. saw the car there, but uh, now that it's finally here, how important a model is it for you? Yes, uh, BRV is a very uh, successful model. Uh, in in some countries, we have launched, and this is the first car uh, for us to enter the uh, compact SUV models. So we are expecting that this model can capture quite broad. Uh, range of the customers and also oh, this is this car has a uh, unique characters with SUV and high utilities so I think uh, these customers can capture not only from the same segment but from the various segments so we are expecting quite a lot to this new model yeah. which of course then leads me to ask you in terms of volume what sort of volume would be, would you be looking for from specifically this car I uh, this is a very first model for this segment, so it's a bit difficult for us to uh, estimate the exact numbers. But uh, so far we are receiving quite a good uh, pre-bookings and we hope that this car can be a, a one big pillar for our sales volume. Um, the segment itself, of course, has been growing rapidly mm -hmm. the last few quarters. We've seen that not just uh, you know, from one particular player, but we've seen a lot of new models coming into this space. Take us back into the development cycle. At what point did Honda decide that it has to be a vehicle which is around this size and not the sub four meter SUV? Because we've seen those coming in as well. Mm -hmm. One uh, important character is uh, this car has seven seaters. So of course uh, there is a uh, limitation of four meters, but we decided to uh, provide more utilities. Uh, of the cabin space and also seating capacities. Uh, but then finally, uh, it exceeded four meters, but I think uh, there is a strong demand for this sort of uh, high utility vehicles. I know you are sort of new into the Indian market, but mm -hmm. I have to ask you, uh, in terms of your market study and assessment of you know, the kind of buyer you'd be able to attract, uh, where does this car fit in versus the other car that's also in your utility portfolio, which is mm -hmm. the Mobilio? So, do the two coexist, or would the Mobilio slowly sort of make way for the mm -hmm. BRV? We developed this car uh, independently, so this is a uh, uh, brand new models, and uh, this car has a very bold styling. Uh, we think that kind of a sporty and bold styling will attract quite young customers, and also this car has a seven-seater and quite good utilities, so it can accommodate uh, a kind of a family. Use. So our target users is uh, young customers as well as uh, uh, family uh, owners so as well. But would you continue to sell the Mobilio? Uh, we are selling uh, Mobilio as well. The uh, other thing that we've seen over the past few, well, few months now is you've always had a lot of capacity pressure because a lot of your models have been doing well. Amaze, for example, mm -hmm. I think there's been a long waiting period in the past. So now between the two plants, uh, how do you see capacity going forward? Mm -hmm. would, you, would you be okay in terms of meeting the kind of demand you are foreseeing or would you already be thinking about expanding mm -hmm. capacity and looking at new 
maybe ways to enhance capacity? Mm -hmm. uh, recently, uh, we have expanded uh, production capacity uh, by expanding the production of uh, Tapukala plant uh, in New Delhi, and our capacity uh, is up, can be uh, is quickly expanded up to 300,000, which is so far uh, quite enough for our current sales volumes. So so far, I believe that we can accommodate uh, the current demand to meet. What part of that capacity would you be looking at? purely for domestic use and is there any kind of a export strategy that comes in mm -hmm. given the fact that you have such a huge scale now? Mm -hmm. uh, because of the popularity of uh, vehicles, I think uh, many countries uh, would like to, are interested in uh, import more vehicles. So we'd like to seek on exploring uh, to find some exporting partners in the future. The reason I ask that question is because a lot of your competitors have built up a, a very profitable business when it comes to exports. Mm -hmm. um, of course, I have to agree that in mm -hmm. some of their cases, mm -hmm. their domestic sales aren't that great. Mm -hmm. You don't have that problem. Mm -hmm. But from a profitability point mm -hmm. of view, export becomes a very interesting area now. Mm -hmm. Also because in India, you've been able to crack a certain cost base. Mm -hmm. In the future, would you think a model like BRV or I know Amaze, you're already exporting it mm -hmm. to some markets, but mm -hmm. would you think that there could be a larger export volume for Honda Car India? Uh, really depending on whether how many countries would like to import from India. But, uh, uh, India is a very fastest growing market and also I think uh, we, our priority should be how a uh, good sales network or sales operations we establish in for domestic market. So, so far uh, I'd like to focus to domestic market first and in the future if there is a demand from surrounding countries uh, we are willing to support these countries to export our products. A few years ago, we, we used to criticize Honda saying the rest of the market is moving towards diesel and, and Honda is too slow. Then, mm -hmm. of course, Honda came with its mm -hmm. 1.5 diesel mm -hmm. engine. You've been very successful with it as well and you've sold large volumes. Mm -hmm. Today, we find a scenario in the market where, again, there's uncertainty around diesel. Mm -hmm. Given the kind of investment you've made towards mm -hmm. diesel, both as Honda globally and Honda in India. Mm -hmm. um, what is your overall assessment of the current situation? Mm -hmm. Do you consider diesel to still be a huge driver of growth for you? Mm -hmm. So yes, uh, uh, implementing small diesel really helped us uh, increase our sales volumes. But uh, what we did is uh, not uh, eliminating petrol, but uh, we added uh, diesels to our lineups. So in uh, currently, uh, our petrol uh, our, and diesel models are produced in the same factories. Unfortunately, we are achieving a very uh, high flexibility to switch the uh, production uh, between diesel and petrol. So, so far, uh, we, are we are managing to accommodate the shift of the demand uh, to supply the proper products to the market. It's not a huge shift still. I mean, right now, mm -hmm. it's Diesel is still fairly popular though in most parts of the country. Mm -hmm. uh, but do you think that the shift will be greater going forward because especially a market like Delhi now becoming more pro-petrol? It really depending on the petrol price or government policies. So, so far uh, we are uh, closely monitoring the market demand change and would like to accommodate ourselves to meet uh, the kind of uh, demand in the future. It is time for us to take a very short break here, but we have plenty more we want to talk about with Ueno-san, so stay tuned.